Hello, my knitting friends. I am Emma Martin of Granola Gear, and I'm back after a little six-month podcasting hiatus. I wanted to get back into it, but I got a job, so I did not get back into it for a while, but now I don't have that job anymore as of a few days ago. Boom, boom. I'm okay with it, not sad about it, 100% fine with me, so here I am now that I have a little more time and energy and brain power to do something I would rather do, which is talk about knitting all day long. So here we are. I'm going to catch up with a lot of finished objects because obviously it's been a while, six months is a while to not talk about them. So I'll try and breeze through the fast and easy ones and maybe talk a little bit longer about some of the ones that caused me problems. I'm really excited to be back. Um, yeah, and I'm going to start with something that feels like forever ago now is uh, my Moby sweater. So this bad boy, I my plan is to knit my husband and I matching Moby sweaters. Different colors, but both Moby sweaters. Um, this is knit in Drops Alaska in, I believe, the color Fog. Obviously, it's a petite knit pattern. Um, it looks beautiful. Looks amazing, right? I, I made a big mistake. I made a big boy mistake, and I had to go back and fix it. And it was a pain in the butt. So his sweater got delayed. Um, it's back on the needles now, but for a while I was like, I was done. Because basically what I did was I didn't really understand her measurements for the front panel. Like once you do the back section of the yoke um, and you come in and do the front, I didn't make it long enough. I was not sure. I was just confused. It's really like the whole uh, trying to manage the the pattern on the, the, the lattice pattern on the back and the cables in the front. It gets really confusing about like where you're supposed to stop. Um, so basically my armholes weren't big enough and it was way too high in the front. So what I ended up having to do was steek like another inch on the front here, which is craziness to make the armhole bigger because the armhole wasn't big enough. And then at the bottom, I ended up, which miraculously you can't tell, I did short rows. I did short rows to make the front bigger. That's insane. That's psycho and somehow for some insane reason it looks fine i love this sweater it's great for a cold day it's great when it's like chilly out and you just want like a big thick layer i love it 10 out of 10. just don't do what i did make the armhole big enough so there that's number one number two uh some quick ones i got a kindle for christmas i knit this little kindle cover the pattern is by Studio, Studio 885 Knits, the Sturdy and Cushy Kindle Sleeve. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it was very quick and easy. I could change the dimensions for my Kindle, which the pattern was old, so uh, the dimensions were different for that one. Um, the one problem I had was once I blocked it, and this is knit with, I thrifted Darn Good Yarns, two different types of silk yarn. One was a DK, one was a sport, and this pattern with two yarns held together, but I was kind of confused about what gauge was actually supposed to be at the end so i probably could have done this it, you can, it's obviously with two different colors like this rainbow yarn and then this um like gold colored yarn i could have i had enough of either that i could have done the whole thing in one color and i kind of wish i had because then i'd have more of one yarn left that i could do something else with but oh well is what it is but after i blocked it it was looser than i wanted it to be so i ended up sewing elastic thread throughout it so that it hugs, hugs my Kindle, which by the way, I'm reading The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrienne Young. It's good. It's a little, little sad-ish, but it's good. 10 out of 10. Um, but yeah, that's another, another quick FO. Um, and then I've got, I had thrifted two skeins of Malabrigo Rios, one in English rose, one in lettuce. So I made my husband and I hats. Um, this is loosely based off the Pearl Soho ribbed hat pattern. I just really have a preference for ribbed beanies. Um, I just like the fit and I like um, how they look. I know some people don't like that the top can be kind of pointy, but I don't think it's that bad. I like things that like suction to my head um, all the way on, nice and tight and warm. So yeah, it's bottom up. I did not start how they wanted you to. I did like the Italian cast on and then I did double... Uh, double knit for like a row or two or whatever on the edge. So it does look a little floppy, but on the head, it looks really nice. Mine, I did the same thing, but I did less stitches and it also 
does that i can't i need to go back in and i need to make this longer this is not long enough the brim is skinnier than i want it to be when it fits on my head and it doesn't go over my ears enough i was being a little skimpy with the yarn i shouldn't have been but these are so pretty i love them so much they're so cute my it's this is not itchy on either of our foreheads um which is awesome next thing is inside out and this is the lulu lulu slipover by petite knit um, I knit this with another sweater I'd knit a long time ago and I unraveled. Um, so this yarn is not my fave. I know it's a wool acrylic blend. I don't know exactly what it is. It was a very long time ago. It was a crochet project actually. Um, I love this. It's very cute. If it was in a different color, I would wear it more. Um, but I do actually still wear it even in this slightly odd color, especially odd for me. Um, the one thing I wish I had done was make the side, like this front section under the arms a little bit longer, but I was kind of at the end of my rope flat knitting by that point, which is understandable. Um, other than that, it was fine. You kind of had to knit this button band in like the tiniest yarn ever, which was not tiniest yarn, tiniest uh, needles. I think I ended up using like my size one sock needles because I didn't have the exact size or something. I don't know, it was kind of kooky. This is also a lot of Italian bind off with the arms and everything. Um, and I was also Italian binding off a bunch of other things at the time. I used mismatched buttons because I just didn't have really great button options. And the stores around me also didn't have great button options. So here we are. But it's cute. I like this. It's a good layering piece. I'm not usually a vest girl. Um, and as I say that, here's another vest that is also inside out. And this is vest number two spring by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I knit this with another vest from the thrift store that I unraveled. And it's a mostly wool blend. It's like a brown kind of tweed, which I really liked. Um, this is, my hair is on it, um, like a super cute academia vibe. Like I really want, I wanted a vest with like the deep V. Um, there are a couple others I had looked at, but I was looking to use a DK weight yarn, which is what this ended up being. And it's very cute on, I did, I don't think it was in the pattern, but I did a split for the rib. Uh, split hem. I think it just fit better with the, the vibe I was going for. Um, it's nice and light. I was wearing this the other day. It's good over pretty much any long sleeve. It looks nice. I don't feel like it's one of those vests that I have to be wearing like a collar under it or something for it to look done. Um, I think it looks really nice with just that. And it's like light. You can wear it under stuff without getting too hot. So yeah, love this guy. Um, the next thing is a sweater for my husband. I've been working on his Moby sweater. I was at the end of my rope. I needed to do something different. I had seen this sweater knit by, her name's Carson. I can't think of like her knitting tag. Um, and she does knitting videos and she's super cute. But she had knit her husband a halibut sweater by Boylan Knitworks and I loved it. It was so cute. And my husband was in a bit of a fishing zone. Um, I'm from Maine very woodsy outdoorsy time growing up and cold uh he had been fishing with my brothers this summer and he was just like in the fishing zone loves fishies who doesn't love fishies duh so i knit him the halibut sweater he saw it and he had to have it which is completely fair um this is knit in drops lima i used My husband got home early. We went for a little errand. Then I got home and filmed this again. And then I realized my mic wasn't on and the sound was really bad. So here I am again, back to talk to you about the halibut sweater. Um, but yes, this is knit in, that's the back. Drops Lima. Um, I did the blue indigo and the pearl gray. I liked that it had less contrast than like a white. So I did the, the pale gray. Um, I prefer the blue indigo to the navy. Like this is a navy right here. And I just like that it's not quite as bright. It's a little bit more of a gray tone. Um, I think it's a bit more of a neutral. Um, I, I just prefer it on the eyes. Uh, yeah, but I really enjoyed this. The one thing I didn't super enjoy was like the long floats in these sections just because I'm not like a super experienced fair aisle knitter. I'm glad it all evened out when I blocked it. Um, the one thing I might have done is uh, potentially done a folded neck band um, to give it a little more support because it is built for like a funnel neck and to be wider. So it kind of pulls apart a bit, um, which is not his favorite, but I guess at least it's not on his neck when he wears a collared shirt under it. Uh, and I might have 
you can see a bit of the like ruffling here. I might have sized down a needle for the short rows um, before I went into this. I had done that in another pattern. It had asked you to do that, but it didn't ask me to do it in this pattern. I didn't have like enough experience to just decide to do that on my own. Um, I blocked it out okay, and it looks okay when it's on. I just like I'd probably do that in the future if I did this again. Might knit myself one someday. Uh, though it was a bit of an ordeal. I'm I cranked out the yoke pretty quickly like as fast as I could because I knew if I just got through that the rest of it would be really easy and it was I enjoyed it he loves it this is a beautiful pattern I, I such an amazing design her feral aisle patterns are beautiful um yeah so the next thing I knit quite a while ago now my champagne cardigan by petite knit uh and it's just by chance that it's in white like hers is because I thrifted this yarn I love this yarn it's so beautiful I ended up having to buy one more skein on eBay in the end which I, uh, the yarn was Knit Picks Indian Silk, which is discontinued now, but it's an alpaca silk and merino blend. And it's so beautiful. The drape is so amazing on this sweater. It's got like a nice little sheen to it. It's pulled a little, but I've worn this a lot, so it's not too bad. Um, I just need to shave off the pills. Uh, yeah, so I spent a dollar a ball on this beautiful, amazing yarn. And then I had to buy one more on Etsy. Like what's $12 for one skein of yarn when the rest, the, the rest of it cost me $10? I adore this pattern. Um, it was such a classic, it's such a classic, beautiful cardigan. And I love cardigans. I wear cardigans all the time. I need to knit more of them because I, I'm drawn to wearing them more often than pullovers usually. Um, it's a nice, simple raglan construction that fits really well, especially with the double knit button band. Um, and I think these buttons came off another, another sweater and they're really nice and heavy. They're glass or something like that. Uh, yeah, but I'm so happy with how this turned out. Um, next I have my sweater number 18 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Uh, I, this yarn is unraveled from a sweater that I got for free somewhere. Um, it's 100% wool. It's like this tweedy black. Uh, it was, oh, there's kind of stuff on the front of it. Um, it was a cabled sweater. It was nice enough, but I find that a lot of commercially made cable sweaters, especially for men, are knit too long. Like they're so long and men don't, most men don't like style their sweat. They're not like tucking it up under or into something like, so if they do wear it, it looks really long. In some cases that looks fine, but I think the average man doesn't really like wearing sweaters like that. So it didn't feel like it was something that was gonna get a lot of wear. I mean, clearly the dude bought it, didn't want it anymore because they gave it away. Um, so I was originally going to knit the, I think it's jacket number one in this, but I was like, ah, I don't really want to do, I don't really feel like knitting a cardigan at the moment. So I was like, oh, I'll do this because I still liked the, the texture. I am not going to knit this again. This, it's, it's pretty, it looks nice. I like it, but knitting, like purling in the round like this was not pleasant. Um, I think I probably would have preferred to knit it as a cardigan because then you're knitting back and forth anyways. Um, trying to get through a body in the sleeves in the round with the purling rows, I just didn't enjoy it. It was not fun. Um, I really like the sweater product. It's a little bit cropped. Um, the yarn's kind of itchy, but it sits high enough up away from my neck that if I wear like a mock neck turtleneck, it doesn't bother me. Um, and I don't wear it a ton, but I do, I do wear it. I keep it in the rotation. Um, yeah, nice pattern. Not gonna do it again. <laughs> Just for the just for the sake of the purling drove me a little crazy, especially looking at black yarn. It was just not in the zone. Um, my one of my favorite patterns that I knit this year, one of my favorite sweaters. I'd been given a a gift card to my little yarn store for my birthday, and I decided I would treat myself and buy a nice yarn for a sweater I really really wanted to knit. I loved the pattern; it was so pretty. Um, and that's the Lumi sweater by Sari Norland. Um, this is knit in Blue Sky Fibers wool stock, wool stoke, worsted, um, in, I think it's lilac sky, where is it? Lilac bloom and the white or natural or undyed, I don't know what the white is exactly. And I love how this turned out. And the fiber is so nice. It's 100% wool, but it has a very rustic look. It's a little bit heathered in the pink, but it doesn't feel too itchy. I adore this. This was so much fun to knit. Um, it fits me really well. 
Um, there were some floats to catch, but it wasn't too, too bad. Um, it was pretty consistent. It was just some in like the bottom of the flowers or whatever that were longer. Um, I love, I love the sleeve detail. I think it's so pretty. Um, for my first big fair isle project, I was really, or like color work project, I was really happy with it. Um, I really liked how it turned out. Um, and I wear this all the time. I, the one thing I maybe would have changed, I don't know, I don't know if they really could change it, but I felt like the neck sat up higher than I expected it to. I guess it looks like it in her pictures, but I just don't think I really processed it. It's kind of like a mock neck almost. Um, I would throw some elastic in it, but then I think it would like hug to my neck more than it needs to because it kind of sits up on my neck. Um, so I think it's fine. I just, you know, just the one thing, but it, it absolutely does not keep me from wearing it. I love this color. I considered a darker color because I feel like I always pick pinks, pinks and greens usually, and uh, lighter shades of pink aren't, I feel like they don't always complement me super well, like they maybe wash me out a little bit, but I wear them all the time anyways. I don't care. Like as long as it's something I know I'm going to wear, I'll just, I'll just get it. I had actually like walked up to someone at the yarn store and said, does this wash me out? Like, how does this look? Uh, but I just went with it because you, you wear what you love. I just, I love how this looks. It's so pretty. I love her black and white version too. I just, this was very me. Um, and I forgot to mention what I'm wearing as well. This is a Monday, Monday sweater by Petite Knit. And I know what you're thinking. That does not look like a Monday sweater, at least in like the color situation um but so i thrift a lot of yarn and unravel a lot from sweaters and i had recently in the last i don't know six eight months thrifted a lot of lace weight yarn it was all different colors a lot of similar fibers and similar brands but all different colors so it was not going all in one thing it wasn't like mohair so i wasn't really thinking i was going to hold it with something i have plenty of sock yarns and i haven't really been in a sock zone so I just, it, I knew it wasn't going to happen for, like, that was not a good use of it either at the time. So I decided I would just knit a crazy striped sweater. Um, it was a bit of an ordeal, but I did enjoy it. It was fun with all the color changes. Uh, I didn't super plan out the stripes super well. I got a little scale so I could weigh how much I was using and do the math. But at some point I realized, obviously, I didn't want to portion it out evenly between the body and the sleeves because the sleeves are going to be longer. So they're the same size stripes, maybe to, like... I don't know, somewhere in the green. And then I realized I had to make them longer. Like this is obviously longer and this is really short because that's all I had. Um, but yeah, this was fun. Um, it's knit with a bunch of Knit Picks lace weights. Uh, in, I think it's the Shadow one, Shimmer, and there's like an alpaca one too. It's all merino and alpaca. I have an alpaca warehouse, a couple skeins of their super fine alpaca that's supposed to be a lace weight. And then I had a couple of skeins of Cascade 220, um, which is 100% wool that, that, uh, in the fingering weight. So I all the fingering weights I held single, all the lace weights I held double, and they worked up uh, pretty evenly so that they could, they were like the same amount. Um, so like the fingering weights were like 220 yards in each skein and the lace weights were like 440. So in half, it was like the same. Um, so then I'd use like, of course, I just, I did like one thing of the alpaca here, the white, and then I used half of it, half of it with the white, half of it with the black, and then half of that black with the brown, and then half of it with the blue. And I kept that going. And then obviously I split somewhere in the blue and white. Um, the one issue I faced was that in the end, I realized the alpaca warehouse yarn, I don't know if it's because the alpaca was more dense or that the Knit Picks yarns were light, like a little thinner, but they held double. The alpaca was just too thick. Um, up here, I left it that way because you kind of don't notice when it's the beginning of it. Right in the middle though, like where this green was, I knit this with all the green. The green is the alpaca and it was knit double. And it was like weird because it was like, went from light, a lighter fabric to a dense fabric, back to a lighter fabric. And it just was not a very polished look for me. I didn't like how it felt. I knew it was gonna keep me from liking the piece as much as I wanted to and wearing it as much as I wanted to. So I bit the bullet. And literally, I had already fully finished the, this. This white is also the alpaca and that had been held double too. So this was really thick. Uh, and I hadn't been able to get the ribbing as long as I wanted it to be. So I ended up just saying, whatever, even though I had finished pretty much the sleeves, except for the ribbing, finished the whole body. I unraveled up past the green. 
uh, took out one strand of the alpaca and worked it back out. Same thing here, same thing with the body, took out the one strand, took out the second strand, took out the second strand, and it's so much better. I, I love this sweater. The feel of it is so nice. I think the colors go together really well. I tried to, I, I, I like mapped them out ahead of time as far as order. I didn't originally plan to use this gray. I just needed a little bit more. I didn't have quite enough in the way that I wanted to use them. Um, so like these are, I used three of them with the brown, but I didn't have enough of this black. So the black skips down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I love how this turned out. I, I tried to spread the black and the white out throughout the sweater. So that is consistent, but the other colors are different. Like we've got the brown, the blue, the green, more or less. Um, so I, I'm really happy with it in the end. It, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of thinking, a lot of measuring, a lot of back and forth, um, but it was fun. I'm doing a similar technique on another Monday sweater that I'll talk about later. Uh, so those are all my finished objects. Um, on to the whips. First thing is one of my plans this year <clears throat> is to knit everybody in my family a sweater. Um, now that I have a lot of sweaters for myself and I don't feel the same urgency to knit myself more, um, I, feel, I feel like more of a gift knitter. My family all lives in pretty cold climates, uh, like in the Northeast of the US. So it felt like a good worthwhile task. Um, I know they'll all wear them at some point. It might not get worn every single day, but they'll all appreciate it. Um, so the first one that I knit, because it was easy and because I had ordered the yarn, um, is a zipper sweater man for my dad in Drops Nepal, which is like a worsted air and weight yarn. And the pattern is for a bulky, but I knit another one of these at some point with an air and weight. So I knew it would be fine. I might need to make the body a little bit longer for him, but I'll have him try it on at some point. Um, I'm categorizing it as a whip because obviously the zipper part is not finished, um, but I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, the yarn is nice. I did Nepal because I feel like the, the wool and alpaca blend is more tolerable for like a non-fiber person to wear day to day. Like it's not quite as bothersome. It's a little, a little softer on the skin. Um, yeah, but I like this. This is like the true navy. Um, they didn't have the like indigo blue or whatever that I liked better, but I think he'll like it. I think it's nice. Um, it was a good project. I, I cranked this one out because I knew it was going to be all stockinette once I got through the yoke and like all in the round after the zipper part. So it went super quick. I did it in like a like week and a half, something like that. Um, the next one is my Moby sweater for my husband. Um, he, this one is in also in Drops Alaska, but it's in the olive. Um, I, after knitting mine and all the craziness that went on with mine, kind of like not super in the Moby sweater zone, but I started the yoke. Um, but it had been so long since I had ordered the yarn, I forgot what size I had ordered the yarn for. So I accidentally started knitting a smaller size. Then after I got through the yoke and had him try it on, I realized it was going to be too small. Um, so I had to unravel the whole yoke. I started the whole yoke, worked through it. Um, and then I did the sleeves. I usually start the body and knit through one skein of yarn and then go back and do the sleeves. I prefer to get those done first because one, it affects the fit when you're trying things on to make sure it fits. And two, Oh, oh, and the collar. I do the collar first too, because that also affects the fit. But also because I I feel like if I do the body and then I do one sleeve, then I'm like, oh, another sleeve. I gotta pick up all those stitches and start that. Uh, but if I do both sleeves, I can actually get through sleeves pretty quickly. So I knock those out and then it's just the body and I have one more thing to do. It's like one more task instead of two more tasks. The body takes me a long time, but if it's all I have left, I feel like I can just sit down and crank on it whenever I feel like it. Or I can leave it and I know I still only have one more thing to do. It's a silly thing, but it just, yeah. So I had less issues with this one, but pretty quickly, I just picked it up after a good long break because I just had not been in, the mood to do, been in the mood to do the body, but now it's almost done. I need to have him try it on one more time, but I think I'm pretty much ready to go to the ribbing for him. This is about this. It fits about the same size as another wool sweater he has. Um, as far as length, I don't want it to be super long. Like I'd said, long men's sweater is not really my vibe. Uh, this was the first sweater that I started felting the ends of my yarn together. And OMG, why did I not do that before? I didn't start until like later in the body. And I was like, all I have to do is like put these two ends together, put some water on it and go like this. And it's together and I don't have any ends to even. Why was, I, why was I not doing this before? So game changer, if you have not done that with wool yarns yet, uh, please do that. It makes your life so much better. So much better, especially if it's like a little rustic, can't even tell. 
I mean, there's so much texture in this. You could never in a million years tell and it makes your life so much easier later. So yeah, highly recommend. So I love this pattern. It gets a little annoying to me because it's not like the Ingrid sweater where you have the stripes of the different texture. It just gets a little old. Um, so I probably want to fist this pattern again, but I enjoyed the two that I made and I like how they turned out. So yeah. <clears throat> um, my next whip is, which one should I talk about? I'll talk about my Elizabeth blouse, which is being knit with um, paint box cotton DK, which I thrifted. I got like 10 or 12 skeins of it. Um, yes, this is a sport weight pattern and I'm knitting it with DK weight yarn. I decided I did not care. And that this is, I really wanted this, this piece and that was what I had. So we're just going with it. Might be a little big, but it's pretty light DK anyways. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, I had to make the sleeve a little bit shorter and it might be a little bit baggier. Yeah, I think it's probably going to be a little bit baggier than it's supposed to be, but it'll be fine. I'll still wear it. Um, yeah, I'm working on the second sleeve now. I'm liking how it's turning out. Might be a little holy, but I'll wear something under it anyways. I think this is a super beautiful pattern. It's really simple, but the, the neckline is so nice. I keep seeing uh, sweaters like this, influencers wearing them store-bought. So it's even more like, but it's so classic with just the v-neck and the collar. I love a good collared, collared sweater. Love it. Cotton collared sweater. One of my favorite sweaters is an L.O. Bean cotton collared cardigan that I wear all summer long. It's my favorite. I have plans to knit one at some point. Um, but yeah, really excited about this. Just in a navy. Yeah. Um, my last big whip. I haven't touched this in a while. Haven't really been in the mood. Uh, this is the Delia sweater by Lay Knit. <sighs> this yarn I unraveled from a sweater and dyed this color because it was white, like my junior year of college. So three years ago, I think, quite a while ago. Um, it was knit into a sable sweater by Well Love Knits. I had, this is like a, a wool or something, or a wool alpaca blend, it's all natural fibers. Uh, I had held it with a acrylic yarn, like an acrylic worsted yarn, and I didn't know how to knit right at the time, so all my stitches were twisted, so I liked it, but it was just not like a finished piece that I was proud of enough to wear anymore. Um, so I decided to unravel it and use the yarn for something different. So I started this and I got through the yoke and there is a little bit of banding because I dyed the yarn myself, but I don't mind that. Um, the issue is more with, I, I got nervous about if I'm going to have enough yarn to do the whole thing. And I didn't like the construction of the sleeves in the pattern and I didn't really feel like doing the math at the time. I don't really like big wide sleeves and this didn't have any decreases. So I was kind of like, eh, and I didn't want to figure it out at the moment. I didn't, I didn't want to like knit up the sleeve, hate it, undo it, have to redo it. So I was like, I'll just put it down and I'll work on it again at a different point. It was more of like a, it was kind of a cast on of like feeling like I want to get rid of this yarn rather than like, I'm really excited about this pattern. I really like this pattern. I just was not in the zone. Um, I'll get back to, back to it at some point, but there are just a few things I'm going to finish before. I might, I don't know, this might be on hold for a while. I, I It'll get finished at some point because it's a quick one. I also did a different neckline. I didn't do the, the double the, uh, the folded neckline because I was also worried about how much yarn I'd have. Um, my voice is getting a little crazy. Um, yeah, I'll get back to it someday. We'll see. Who knows? Um, yeah. The last work in progress is partially in a plastic bag, and that is the Kaisla. I don't know. It's from the 52 Weeks of Socks. That's like the pattern. It's kind of ribbed with a lace detail in the rib. It's very pretty. I brought it with me to work on, on a trip, but I, this is heavy. This is not. This is my first sock of the two. I'm worried that I use too much in, too much in this sock and I'm not going to have enough for the second sock. Also, I didn't really enjoy knitting this. I wasn't too difficult. It was just too much brain power. Um, it wasn't like mindless, like rib or like a plain sock would be because it had the little lace details. It's very pretty. I just, honestly, this, this was in, I was using this yarn held with an, the same yarn in a different color. I got it from Lovecrafts. I can't remember what it is. It's a super wash with nylon, um, for the Hollingborn sock, which is also in 52 weeks of socks. And I just don't think I'm ever going to be a color work sock girl. It takes so much work and it's so small. I, it was just, I was never going to finish it. So I was like, oh, I'll do something easier. And then I haven't been working on this either. Uh, I really did lost my sock mojo for a lot of last year. I think really 
as much as I love the pretty socks, I get a lot of those and I would rather do like some plain socks some plain stockinette socks that I feel like I could wear day to day because most of the socks that I have are like crazy lace socks and I just wear them around the house because they're not super comfortable in shoes wearing around. Um, so I think that's going to be one of the things I work on this year is just doing some plain socks that are more every day and that are easier to knit. I like, I, I can knit a sock without looking at it in the right yarn if it's just a stockinette. So I think that's the way to go for me. Um, just do, do some plain old socks and be happy with my finished product and getting to use my sock yarn without like getting annoyed at all the little fiddly stuff. So that, that might be where I'm, where I'm going with socks for now, as much as I love the pretty lace socks. Um, so those are all my works in progress on to acquisition. So the first thing I have, this yarn, which was, sorry, my, my hair is in my mic. I don't want it to be making sounds. Sorry if it was. Um, this was a different color and it was in a sweater. I bought this Cascade 220, like a worsted weight to match a yarn, like a Cascade 220 worsted weight that I had thrifted, it didn't really end up matching. It was a very bright orangey coral. I really like that color. I just don't really end up wearing that color in the end. Um, I knit a pattern of my own design in it. I really liked it, but I wasn't wearing it because it really wasn't something that I actually would wear day to day. It's a high like turtleneck. It was kind of tight and it was just not something I was gonna throw on especially because I had been working remotely and like from home, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't throwing on a tight, fancy sweater every day. I was throwing on like a, a bigger, cozier sweater like this one. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, it's wool. I can do whatever I want with it. Like I'm just gonna unravel it and make it into something I'm gonna use. I thought about keeping the color because I still like the color. I just, I thought about it in like the context of a champagne cardigan or a novice sweater like a couple others and I just was not liking the image in my head of that and I, I thought I just still wasn't gonna wear it um so I decided I would dye it I dyed it the other day with writ dye in the wine color and I love it now um I think this is probably going to get worked into a color work sweater of some kind I have four it was originally four skeins of this I have the other cascade still I may also dye that one too because it's kind of a bright blue and I don't like that color very much um or use another worst weight yarn that I have a knit a fair isle sweater um, I think that'll be very pretty. I love this color and that'll be very fun. Um, so yeah, highly recommend just dyeing yarns that you have. Like it's wool, it's a natural, fi like, or natural fibers, like just go for it. Like if you don't like it, you can give it away if you want. If it's like a, if it's like a hand dyed yarn or whatever, like I'm not saying over dye that. Like a random commercial, like wool yarn, just over dye it. Like, you know, if it's just black, like if it means you're going to use it and you're going to wear it, like you invested in the, the price of this, just just like over over diet who cares um the next i'll do all my commercial yarns first that was technically commercial even though i over it um i have a bunch of this drop selena that i ordered for my mom's sweater um it's in the taupe brown i believe it's a dk i'm gonna knit the eva cardigan for her i picked it out but i think she'll like it and i think she'll get a lot of wear out of it and she picked this color um I think she's definitely more of a cardigan person like me. I really, I, I was going to knit the pattern for myself, but I was kind of like, eh, um, I don't know if I would need to knit myself a cardigan right now and like buy your yarn for it, but I will do that for her, of course. Um, so that's the plan. I'm excited about that. Uh, I just need to confirm what size I think she's going to be. I think she might, I, she, I was between two, so I bought enough for either. Um, yeah, I just have to confirm that. So yeah, I'm excited about that. That's a pretty sweater. I'm I'm not always great at two by two rib. My, there tends to be a bit of a gap, but I think I'm gonna try some techniques to like like tighten the the last stitch on my my rib when I do two by two rib it tends to be really wide for whatever reason. Like it's just not tight enough. But I'll try a few things. Um, next is this half cotton half wool yarn that I thrifted. I have three skeins of this. Got it for like a dollar fifty each. It's Brown Sheep Co. Um, which is they do like the lamb's pride yarn that's it's like one ply i have a couple of those I, I tend to find those a lot at thrift stores too um it's like a chainette yarn i think no it's not it's just the cotton that gives it that look i guess it is just plied um i'm probably gonna knit some kind of summer top in this it's not i think it would be fine next to skin 
Um, it's not like a merino that's super soft or whatever, but it's half cotton, so should be fine. I like the pink. It's a pretty color. This I'll wear, um, so I don't really need to dye it. I only dye really when I need to, when I'm like, this is not happening otherwise. So, yep, I have three of these. They're like 160 yards each. I might do like a, I don't know, I had an idea. I can't remember. It was the Alice top or something like that that I was thinking about. Um, oh, one more commercial. Uh, paint box, cotton DK. This I did by myself on sale a while ago. I was originally going to knit uh, a design a crochet top with this. But as much as I love crocheting, and that is where I started, I just, crocheting is just not going to happen for me for a while. Maybe ever. Yeah, so this I bought with the intention of crocheting a top. But I just, crocheting really gives me carpal tunnel super quickly. Um, the last time I crocheted something big, it just killed my wrists. Um, knitting does not do that. My arms and my hands get sore sometimes, but it goes away after a day. It does not cause permanent ouchies. And that is what crocheting does as much as I enjoy it. I'll knit a granny, granny square too. I'll do some smaller projects. Maybe I'll do a blanket that I do over time at some point. I just really cannot sit down and crochet long term. It does not, my body does not like it. Um, when I knit, I knit continental because I started with crocheting. It was easier. Not really, I think the movements of that don't bother my wrists as much. Um, but with this, I think I'm going to knit an anchor shirt. Um, I really like the anchor motif. The ribbing. I have an anchor shirt already that I like that's in like a bamboo wool blend. Um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna use this for. I'm excited about that as springtime comes. Um, next, these in the bag. This is 24 hand dyed mini skeins that I thrifted. <laughs> um, they were actually 25 at the thrift store, but one of them was alone in the bag with something else, and it was like five dollars for the bag. And I was like, I'm not gonna pay five dollars for that one last mini skein. So, my plan for this is I have. Uh, drops tinsel mohair on the way, and I'm gonna hold it with these in like a stripey pattern to knit another Monday. Sorry, Monday sweater. Um, I looked at a lot of patterns for different colorwork sweaters with minis, and there really aren't many. There's like the sea glass tee. But I just, I didn't really want to like. I didn't really want to knit colorwork with it. I wanted to do something stripey. I just didn't want to think about the the colorwork. It was it was a lot of thought, and I didn't want to have to map it out. And I just I would rather just knit it. Um, so I kind of have a color plan in mind. Um, this is all different colors. They're all very bright. The mohair that I got is the chalk color. Um, so it's just like a white, not like a creamy white, just a white, which will work with these bright colors because these are all fingering. I don't know if they're, they're definitely super washed, but I don't know if they're super washed with nylon or just super washed. Either way, it'll be really fun. I'm really excited. Uh, this is going to be, I'm so excited for this. It's going to be a crazy sweater. And I love crazy fun projects like that. Uh, like for me, this is, I don't, I don't like, I like patterns to be crazy as far as colors and stuff and maybe color work. I'm not really like a crazy fit person. Like this is really comfy. I like to be comfy like most of us do. Uh, I don't need it to be like some crazy style statement as far as like design, cut, whatever, and details as though those are fun sometimes. I love like some good crazy colors. I'm so excited about this. I don't know if you can see them all, but like, oh, oh, look at that. Amazing. Beautiful. Woo. Um, so hopefully I'll get to show you that next time. Uh, and the last three I have are, these are all unraveled from commercially knit sweaters. One of them I over dyed. Um, first one is, this is cashmere. It's like a lace weight. Um, I might dye this thinking maybe a dark green. My whole, probably with hold with something else too. This is a cardigan. I, I don't, I usually pick sweaters that are like a little old, not really in style anymore. A lot of like early 2000s sweaters that aren't like Y2K cute, but they're just like long and skinny and ugly. <laughs> um, just not really the vibe anymore. And then try and turn it into something. That, sorry try and turn it into something that's a lot more wearable now and wearable over time. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this was also something like that. This is hundred percent wool. It was an old Navy sweater just in a, in a light Brown. Um, I might also over dye this I might hold these together. Not sure. Don't know what I'd knit with them. But I'll figure it out. It doesn't have to be right now. It's just there for inspiration for later. And then this, I over dyed this. This is silk and cashmere. It was, you can see bits of it from where I tied the ends together. This is super bright blue. 
like kind of like this darker blue but brighter it was an ugly color <laughs> in my personal opinion it was it was like a shockingly unattractive sweater but a very nice fiber silk and cashmere i over dyed it this navy blue i'm not sold it was a little patchy i think because of the fiber my plan is to knit the blouse number one by my favorite things knitwear with this and if i don't like how the color looks i'm gonna over dye the whole thing black i'll definitely wear it like that i'm not a huge black person but i'll still obviously wear it it's basic um so yeah this is like a worsted weight so lots of things to do with this but i believe i believe that's everything um thank you for joining me i really enjoyed this i look forward to making more videos soon because i have more time for now and this is something i wanted to invest my time into and I, it looks like i'll be maybe doing some of that so thank you for joining me i hope you enjoyed let me know if you did um and have a great day